again, dear listener and watcher. This is the start of the show. Welcome to Fine Period Comma Online, a series of pre-recorded videos featuring storytelling and otherwise. On the show today, we have the wonderful Ivana Baranova, Emily Dundas Oak, and Aaron Reed. And throughout the episode, you'll hear music from The Giving Shapes from their debut album, Earth Leaps Up. And they also made a really awesome music video that we'll be seeing towards the end of the program. All right. And I'm the host of this thing. My name is Cole Nowicki. And I hope all of you are doing all right out there. I'm doing pretty good up here. Thank you for asking. It's about 12 degrees Celsius. Birds are chirping. And I think, I think we're in for a hot one today. Okay. Enough about me. Let's get on with it. Enjoy the show. Okay, here I am again. Apologies. I just wanted to read a few poems. Just three. Three poems. The first one is called Love is Blind. And it's about love and, I think, natural gas. I never did watch the show about people living in pods, dating virtually, not once catching sight of the prospective partner, until it was time to commit to marriage. But I heard a lot about it. Trashy entertainment for trashy times. So was winning committing your life to someone you'd never physically met? Is committing your life to someone a victory under normal circumstances? Serious question, asking for me. Love is something I think about often, in a panic, when I think I need it or have lost it, like a set of keys, desperate. I'm 30 now, which isn't as old as it used to be, but man, do I ever need to be in love. Before my reserves run dry, and I have to frack my heart by shooting hot air into it to comfort and convince it, and have whatever feelings are left erupt to the surface. All right, this next one is about a stranger who refused to accept my unsolicited advice. It's called Set a Place. From the sidewalk, I yelled into the shirtless man's open front door where I could see him tend to something on the stove. I warned him about the raccoon which sat just a few feet out of frame. It's all good, he shouted back, faith concrete, unshakable, unconcerned with the creature's potential to creep into his home and make itself at home, rummage through closets, recline in his favorite chair, reset the Wi-Fi password, set its own place at the table. Heap strips of bacon onto a plate without asking. Of course it can use tongs, opposable thumbs, remember? Thanks, the shirtless man yelled as the raccoon looked on, a gesture for me to leave. All right, this is the last one, and it's called Our Father. Every so often, my older brother will take ownership over the past, present, and one would assume the future declaring that I would not be the person I am today if he hadn't treated me the way he had when we were kids. This made me a tougher, more resilient person, he argues. My current character owed to his previous lack thereof. I'd say he can claim partial responsibility for my ability to, and in some cases get perverse relishment from, taking a good whooping. He introduced me to skateboarding after all, an endeavor that demands blood and flesh in exchange for growth, Each new trick learned is not a gift. It's salvation after paying penance for having the audacity to try. Every time your body meets the concrete on a failed attempt, a Hail Mary, an Our Father, eventually it becomes routine, like a kickboxer conditioning their shins, tirelessly hitting a heavy bag, causing webs of microfractures in the tibia that over time will ossify, the bone becoming stronger than it was before, now desensitized in search of success. Totally cool, normal things to do. My pinned tweet on Twitter includes a video of 17-year-old me trying to ollie onto a dumpster, then hanging up and getting flung six feet below onto my back and head, our father. The tweet is a joke about failure, about not even meeting a trash bin standards. But the thing is, in that video, before meeting the asphalt, I thought I had it. 
knew it, in fact, had already landed it just minutes before, but wanted to do it again, got greedy, hail Mary. After I pulled myself from the ground, I wanted to try it one more time, because this wasn't failure, just a misstep towards absolution. If my vision would just stop blurring, I could do it, I swear. All right, thank you for listening to those things. Let us continue on with the show. Now we have Aaron Reed. Aaron is a musician, illustrator, comedian. He does most things. He also made this. It's weird that countries use animals as mascots for their country. Do you think animals do the same? Do you think somewhere out there, I'm on a flag, and the context is that I've eaten too much pudding, and I'm sad at how much I touch myself? Just a thought. Doing drugs is fun. Doing drugs with your friends is even more fun. The best part about doing drugs is finding out which of your friends has a problem with you and allowing that to slowly come out through the night. Either that or puking in the back of a stretch limo for one you rented and having all your friends text you photos of them at their secret clubhouse, which you can't get into because you can't burp and fart at the same time, which is the secret password. You can do one or the other, but never both at the same time. Running is really fun. It's healthy and makes me feel good. The more I run, the less I'm worried about my personality. I find that all I want to do is run. I'm a health nut, what can I say? I've lost a couple friends to running. The other day, my best friend Pete was eating pizza. I called him a loser and told him that he was addicted to cheese and crust. Needless to say, we don't talk anymore. But that's okay, because now that I run, my thoughts are my best friends. Gotta get to the frickin' gap! I gotta get to the gap! Randy River, off the wall, bootlegger, I don't care. I just need to get to a mall so I can get some jeans. Yeah, little turtle jeans. I've got the money, some tourist stuff dollar bills down my mouth to take a cruel photo. Yeah, I've got about 40 bucks. That'll be enough. Buy some jeans. Then I gotta mend them. Ah, uh, I'm a size 36 too, so I better mend those jeans. Oh my god, how am I gonna get to the mall? Next up is Emily Dundas Oak. Emily's an emerging curator, interdisciplinary artist, and arts administrator. As a Métis, Scottish, English, and Nehiyao Iskew, she is grateful to be an organizer and a co-curator of the Indigenous Brilliance Reading and Performance Series. She's had the pleasure of doing residencies here and abroad and made it through a philosophy degree. Here's Emily. Um, Tate ko. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak with these fine people and for um, the introduction. Um, there are many things that don't make their way into introductions. Things scattered across bedroom floors, neglected on kitchen tables as they wait a small moment of care. Not given the freedom to be unfurled from the sheets as we are called elsewhere. Building small piles, echoes of my own body I left at home on the counter. These things exist in narrow moments of time left as the crumbs of labor. I wonder about this time redirected elsewhere, taken from busied hands and minds and used for another. Could it be cut from the same thread, knotted, beading thread, draping across the dust bunnies underneath? A whole cosmology of time strewn unfinished on the floors, beads pulling like loosely. As far back as memory serves, I see it bend over and over again, this thread extending through generations, only so I can meet it again as it comes at me from the future, meeting at my belly button. I can't help but think memory as an echo of circles. When I stretch my arms out to embrace you, I take note of its circular shape. It holds you in, holds me tight. This same comfort extends far beyond the horizon of memories bend. It's circles so large, not every aspect of it yet familiar. 
Um, Nitsi Kasan, Emily Danesok, and Emily um, in Nehiyawe when when we introduce ourselves with. Uh, we use the word Nitsi Kasan, which I've been told means, um, Nitsi means belly button. So we introduce ourselves because we're, who we are is, um, that connection or belly button between our ancestors and our future. Um, so I've just been thinking about that in my work as whatever I am, um, an artist or curator or whatever. Um, really my work right now is sitting in this room a lot, um, thinking, um, but then also going for walks by the river. So I'm currently in Shikwetmikulu, the unceded territory of the Shikwetm people. Um, and more precisely, I'm in Te Kemleps Te Shikwetm. So that's where the rivers meet. It's a really important place. Um, it's been my host for many years of my life. Um, but I don't live here now and most of my books are elsewhere. And so I've been thinking stories are still coming to me. Like, you know, many of our stories live in our bodies, I believe, but lots of them live in our books too. So I'm just being mindful during these times of what stories are coming to me. And I thought I'd share one with you. Um, this is from Leslie Marmon Silko's Sunrise, or sorry, Ceremony. Um, it's a book I tell everybody they need to read. So this is it. Um, Titsunako, Thought Woman, is sitting in her room and whatever she thinks about appears. She thought of her sisters, not Sitsi and it's Sitsi, and together they created the universe. This world and the four worlds below. Thought woman, the spider, named things. And as she named them, they appeared. She is sitting in her room, thinking of a story now. I'm telling you the story she is thinking. I will tell you something about stories, he said. They aren't en just entertainment. Don't be fooled. They're all we have, you see. All we have to fight off illness and death. You don't have anything if you don't have the stories. Their evil is mighty, but it can't stand up to our stories. So they try to destroy the stories, let the stories be confused or forgotten. They would like that. They would be happy, because we would be defenseless, defenseless then. He rubbed his belly. I keep them here, he said. Here, put your hand on it. See, it's moving. There is life here for the people. And in the belly of the stories, the rituals and the ceremony are still growing. What she said. The only cure I know is a good ceremony. That's what she said. Sunrise. Um, so that ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silko. I'm grateful I took a photo of that passage a little while before I came. Um, and other stories that are carrying me through this time uh, is one I'm not yet finished, but this is The Marrow Thieves. Um, I think many of us are dreaming more than we normally do, or those of us who often dream lots might be noticing different sorts of dreams. So I'm just dreaming about, um, small details of people I don't know well, and, um, people rejoicing and being outside, but I just thought I'd share this small excerpt from Marrow Thieves, which is about dreams, really. Um, as it turns out, every dream Minerva had ever dreamed was in the language. It was her gift, her secret, her plan. She'd collected the dreams like bright beads on a string of nights that wound around her each day, every day, until this one. Um, I hope you all share with your dreams with me. Um, you can be in mine if I can be in yours. <laughs> uh, bye. Thank you so much. They say the world is in the hands of our children. Well, what's in the hands of our grandpas? I'll tell you. It's an old book of nudie photographs of sailors' wives he used to know. And a receipt from Denny's, where he didn't tip very well because the server didn't like it when he called them sweetie. And he couldn't tell if it was a lady or a guy. What's in the hands of our grandmas, you ask? The saddest, deepest secrets. Board. 
time. This comedy is brought to you by Soul Orb. Being a musician is scary. You never know how your music is going to be used in the future. Like, do you think the Sugar Hill Gang would have made their smash hit Rapper's Delight if they knew that one day it would be played at an all-white wedding by DJ Bryce? And if their song played while the bride vomited pulled pork sliders on the dance floor and berated a four-year-old girl for stealing her thunder while the groom cheated on his bride in the bathroom? I don't think they'd make it. Or at the very least, I don't think they would have shown white people the song. Hey everyone who is scared of wasps, when one comes into our room, have we tried asking it if it wants to hang out? Or telling it that it looks nice today and that it always brings us joy when we see it? I think the wasp would fly out the room big time, because wasps are really the jocks of bugs, with hurt hearts, ashamed, and afraid of intimacy or true connection. I think this would be faster than hiding near the door and whispering, Go out the window, you frickin' ding-a-ling! Up next is Ivana Baranova. Ivana is a Guatemalan Slovak poet and author of Confirmation Bias, published by Metatron Press in 2019. Her work has appeared or is forthcoming in Wonder, Blush Lit, Peach Mag, Jubilop, Newest York, Cosmonauts Avenue, and elsewhere. She lives in Brooklyn. Here's Ivana. Preset. Collapse never anticipates its subsequent form. A joke about essential error incites my innermost defenses. Thin cut feeling like gauze, the grief of organization, individuated, exhaustive. I find a swimsuit the color of my purported aura more presets for the casket. When I outlast the seasons, when I engender what bores, cultivating an internal climate of zeros. Is it my dim light retina, my near sight circuit? Shit hits the fan with harmonic awe. One motion removes doubt the other absorbs it. I see something in me murdered every day, a geometry of calm resuscitation. Two, two, two for chariot. Presence is the first form of devotion. How else to litigate the breadth of what adores you. Telepathy revives our asylum, reveals whose turn it is to be the wonder of the other. In this tiny electronic mess, I get to be only a racing heart when the rest of me forfeits movement. All night, I dream us blessed. It renders my worship the highest biological assembly, a cool militant echo resetting. Outside the psychic shop. Pacing can't move me at the speed you're wanting words. I mouth a cue, you jump the turnstile. Each time I speak, a new payment. Face-fucking the final moments of my lunch break is the only profit I could adore. The transactions are unrelenting. I stare straight in the eyes of your collector, chugging grapefruit seltzer under rain. Grief hits like a punch Enough with closed eyes to call this living. Looking soft to march for the Lucy shop, 
cop an afternoon seat on the downtown train. Your artist wife will never feel peace in your house. She will always want to be alone. Parade. Don't tell me I'm a good person. Who would redeem a binary so impossible as that? Few can even help the mannequin of their affect. An abiding procedure is a limitless chore. I understand. When I'm done pretending to, I play dead. Always hiding in the bathroom, talking superstructure, hurling at the lid. My mind the obstinate function of its own endurance. Intercom. Goodbye, anti-natural agenda. Pragmatic fantasy volleys my inner calm in every private departure of my minuscule day. I'm not beholden to such elation. Every gesture, every mental calibration, more trust, more blissness. Something about waiting really gets me off. A fatalistic belief is contagious. EKG. Everyone exalts their own abject plans this weekend, but my mind's social trajectory is invariably same. I take up smoking again to confirm our compatibility, a salve for the disconnective impulse you know, my body can't help but dance when I see you on the platform, radiant somatic emblem, mirroring these atomic depths of me. Congratulations on your face. It's a good one. I plagiarize your essence as a means of revival, so in life's every iteration witnessed, there's you all this time, and still I'm shocked by loneliness displayed in myself, misunderstanding the stages of dispersal and manifestation. I see now, I was an obdurate rain in this urban suburb. I discovered how free I felt when I stopped taking cover. I resurrected in the alcohol of perfume. I said yes to not saying no. I was communicating with dusk and intimately the sky saturated me in its omniscient magenta enclosure. I couldn't help but blush. And just like that, I became gratitude's fullest expression. I carried my heart's choreography on an eight by 11 sheet. I looked around and forgot what had been taken from me as soon as I stopped keeping score. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Cole, for having me. It's so nice to feel um, in a way that I get to be home in Vancouver. I'm recording from Brooklyn and feeling a little homesick and very grateful to have gotten to share some work with y'all. Thank you again and have a safe day. Come on down to Franklin's Pumpkin Patch. Please, someone buy this pumpkin. It won't stop harassing my family. All it does is watch Fox News, and I came out one night, and it had my basset hound by the tongue.
Hell, I'll pay you to take the pumpkin away. I'll do 30 years of manual label for free for you. I'll come to your ho house and wash your horse and tell your kids that fanny packs are two nineties to for. <clears throat> I find the history of language to be really beautiful. It's amazing how it's advanced through all these years. It's crazy to think that this West Germanic language brought to Britain in the 5th century started out with simple words like I, we, and who, and evolved into common, often complex phrases we use today like, that's a nice shrimp ring, and I think it was Cody who cummed on the beanbag chair. And now, a video by The Giving Shapes for their song, Shadows Hue.
That is it. This is the end of the show. From up here to wherever you are, thanks again to Ivana, Emily, Aaron, The Giving Shapes, you for tuning in, and all the frontline workers. We appreciate you. Take care.